Hi, everybody. Um, I am Jacqueline Wenzel. I am the chair lady for the South African chapter of the Spa and Wellness Association in Africa. I'm based in Cape Town in, um, in South Africa, and um, I think the reason why I am um, on, on this panel this morning is because um, our industry is made up of mostly small businesses. Um, throughout Africa, we've seen small businesses um, over the last um, few years take a strain. Um, so one of the questions that was um, asked to me was, um, you know, um, how technology is going to work um, in our businesses. You know, our spa and wellness industry is a touch industry. We are experts in touch. We understand um, wellness, um, which is usually um, digital detoxing. And now the world, and because of this pandemic, the world has changed so much that we've had to rely on technology to be able to communicate with our clients and, um, and sort of keep ourselves in the eye of the client. And it's been a challenge. Um, you know, our industry is, um, it's been a very difficult transition for us because our industry, we are experts in touch. We understand one-on-one -on -one communication with our clients. Um, we deal with consulting with them, you know, um, very much in a hands-on way. And um, all of a sudden, we're being told to Zoom and Skype and um, whatever other technologies there are on board. And we're not experts in that. Um, so it has been a challenge for our industry to transition to being more digital. Um, and I think the other thing that our um, industry has suffered with is who to trust. You know, we're um, experts in one field and um, that there's so many people out there that's actually come on board as technology experts. And so who do we trust? As a small business, um, we are um, reliant on every single cent that comes in. And so for, and, and our industry's margins are really small. People always think we make huge amounts of money with spas and salons and so on, but we actually don't. Our margins are very small. We've got um, a very high staff bill because it's technically um, um, orientated staff that has been studying for years to be able to um, work in our industry. And so we have to pay them properly. And to be able to pay them properly, it means our profit margins are quite low. And because of that, um, we don't have millions like these big corporations to spend on marketing. We don't have big millions to spend on technology. Technology is our, um, I would say, our sideline, if you want to call it that, because um, there's even still some salons that make physical bookings in a book, in a diary every day. So I think the thing what we've all relied to, relied on in the last few um, weeks and months and, and years since this pandemic is obviously um, free, free um, platforms like you know, social media, social media, and um, WhatsApp business, and and those type of things, because that's all we know, and it's all that um, at this stage we can afford, probably, because survival is the game at the moment. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, um, please, let's see, please give, give us a, another dive into the status of um, freelancers with an income digitalization. So, as indicated, when it comes to digitalizations, um, it's the, the platforms are there. I would say they are not enough. However, we still have uh, challenges as freelancers in the sense that I've indicated aspects such as affordability and network coverage and also uh, electricity challenges. You find that I have to meet with, the, with a client at this particular time to discuss a brief. At that time, my network coverage gets to be poor or electricity cuts off. And that's how it becomes very challenging and tricky, or it becomes a, a barrier or a problem when it comes to digital world and platforms. And also the affordability of data, uh, it's also something else in the sense that many small businesses um, or many freelancers cannot afford that too much expensive bundles. You find that the cheaper bundles packages are with poor uh, coverages at certain areas. So uh, the digitalization works well in the CBDs and that is where the issue of com competition comes in to say 
those who are in the CV, these freelancers who are located in the center of business districts are the ones doing the most when compared to others in the other parts of uh, the country. But, but okay, so we are seeing an infrastructure problem and um, we, we understand that it comes from a government level. And what this digitization has allowed is when a freelancer has access to internet, let's just say for two hours they go to an internet cafe, um, like we use, like we like most would do, and they have access to service their client, whether they're based in Germany, Cape Town, yes. Hare, or if they're in Accra. Can that start leveling the, the, the playing field for freelancers? The fact that they can now start engaging uh, professionally even without the resources of uh, that, that, that are supposed to be provided with the natural structures. So well, that becomes uh, one advantage to see, to indicate that digitalization becomes a, a, a tool of communication across countries and it allows globalization to occur. Hence I said, it's um, something which is very advantageous in the CBDs. For, for example, myself, I had to move from the villages of the Sikukuni district to Polokwani, which is a CBD. Located that side, I have a good coverage and we barely have a load shedding and I have smooth runnings and the competition is, I'm keeping up with the competition as a freelancer through dig digitalization. Congratulations to you <laughs> for, for, for really living up the game and, and, and I think this is proof and proof that you can um, um, really start uh, progressing and growing your business. Um, so